Well, this is what it's come to. I'm doing a video about the 49ers from a mall. Not just any mall, it's the Mall of America. At one point, maybe even now, the largest mall in the world. I don't really feel like looking that up because I don't care, but you can look it up on your own. The short story is that in Minneapolis, a city not known for its good weather, I've been forced to flee inside before my flight, so I decided to check out the Mall of America. Now, also while it was raining, I checked out some of the culinary offerings of this city, and every city has its great fast food, right? Every great city has to have its great fast food. I don't know if I'm gonna categorize Minneapolis as a great city yet, but they do have the great Juicy Lucy here from Matt's. Molten cheese inside of the two burger patties, two thin burger patties pressed up against each other. They've called it an evolution of the burger, a very ne necessary evolution of the burger, which has uh, become more gourmet over the years in America. And I'll tell you what, that's a nice transition because the 49ers need to see an evolution of their defense. I think Fred Warner said it best. Fred Warner said that the 49ers need to show more mental toughness defensively. We saw through the first five games that the 49ers can dominate teams, and they did. Offensively, defensively, through special teams, they're 5-0, and oh, they look great. But over the past two, when the affairs have gotten grittier and grimier, when it's required some more resolve and toughness to win, the 49ers haven't quite been up to the challenge. Now, I think it's way premature to say that the 49ers aren't up to the challenge. I think that you have to give them some credit for what they've done in years prior. In 2021, they won a ton of nail biters. In 2022, they won their close games. The sample size is still small. It's only two weeks big. So here in 2023, the 49ers are 0-2 in closer games. But Fred Warner has a point. They've got to be better when it comes to executing the grimy details in these types of affairs. Yesterday, I mean, I, I think if you're gonna start a to-do list for what the 49ers can do better, it must begin with stopping the run. I already wrote about that last week. That was my big focus coming out of the Browns game. A lot of people didn't want to buy into it. They said, oh, the, the 49ers defense was fine. Oh, the penalty on Deshaun Gibson, um, you know, cost them the win against the Browns, and it might have. But the problem is that they again struggled against the run, giving up nearly six yards a carry in the first half. And this time there was a really good quarterback in Kirk Cousins on the other end. Cousins had an amazing game. He manipulated the 49ers defense of the line of scrimmage with his run checks. He got rid of the football uh, on passing plays and he was extremely accurate. The 49ers gave Cousins, and, and you have to give the Vikings credit too. This was the best tackle combination in the league, I would think, between Christian Derrissaw and Brian O'Neill. Uh, the Vikings built a platform for success for Kirk Cousins, and the 49ers helped them get it by not defending the run well enough. So there's a laundry list of items that the 49ers need to fix. It starts with better run defense. Better run defense can, uh, you know, the pass rush struggled even on its own. There were situations where they did stop the run on first and second down, and then Cousins would complete a third and 12. He was 8 of 13 on third down. But I think it's a mojo thing. I think it's a mentality. If you're stopping the run in your sleep, like the 49ers have in recent years, then you're gonna be able to pin your ears back and be on your toes when you're rushing to pass it. You're not gonna be on your heels. And the 49ers pass rush is definitely on its heels right now. They've got way too many high paid guys to not be making splash plays. They'll have only a 15.7% pass rush win, win rate. That was the 49ers lowest pass rush, pass rush win rate in a game since 2017. It just wasn't acceptable for the 49ers, and it starts with the toughness against the run. Gritty, grimy games, the team that controls the line of scrimmage usually wins those. And the 49ers in the past, they've controlled the line of scrimmage, at least with their defensive line, and they didn't do it against the Vikings, who have those great tackles yesterday. So good offensive line play combined with good quarterback play scuttled the 49ers. And you know, guess what? The 49ers, when they play the Eagles in December, and I mean, this journey still has a long way to go, but when they play the Eagles in December, they're gonna have to get go against a very good offensive line. Just like Minnesota, the Eagles can pass protect. The Eagles can run block. And Minnesota, you know, funny enough, they, they hadn't run the ball very effectively entered, entering this game against the 49ers. That's not a good sign for the 49ers. And all the more reason why Chris Kacarek and Steve Wilkes and that defense has to stiffen up. But to be serious Super Bowl challengers, the 49ers need to puff their chests out 
and they need to challenge some of these good offensive lines because the Eagles also have one. So that's order of business number one. And I think that, you know, complimentary football is such a key when, not just when your, your defense feels your offense and your offense feels the defense, but complimentary football within a unit. Your run defense will feel your pass rush. It becomes a domino effect. I often say, and coaches will often say, that the wins are never as good as they look and the losses are never as bad as they look. And the reason for that is it's a domino complementary tie-in. If you do one thing better in the game of football because it's also interconnected and jobs are so uniquely prescribed, if you do just one thing better in a key spot, everything else can look better just by that domino effect. But if you do one thing worse, everything else can look worse. That's why you can go from being blown out to blowing a team out in the NFL because all these players are really good. So the 49ers have to get back on the right side of the complementary formula. And that's why I look for that first domino to knock down. And that first domino to knock down is the run defense. If the 49ers even, I mean, it, here's the thing about the 49ers. If, if, if they deliver better defense, if they don't give up 35 minutes of possession because they can't get off the field, all of a sudden somebody like Brock Purdy is able to handle the game a lot better then. And Purdy, I mean, Purdy's the only one that showed up to play in the first half. He played an excellent game for, for three plus quarters here, but he needs the support of his team. He needs a defense that's getting off of the field so he can orchestrate the same kind of offense that Kirk Cousins did. Kirk Cousins was presiding over an offense that was running the ball, running screen passes, wearing down the 49ers defense, converting on third down against the tired defense. I mean, Brock Purdy didn't have that opportunity because of the McCaffrey fumble, because of the fact that his own defense didn't force a punt till the fourth quarter. So it's a team sport, and it could look a whole lot better really soon if certain components of the team begin executing better to help the other components of the team. In this case, the 49ers defense, which should take most of the blame for yesterday, starts helping the team's offense. That's how the 49ers turned it around last year. On October 23rd of last year, they lost to the Kansas City Chiefs. On October 23rd of this year, the 49ers lost to the Minnesota Vikings. Blowout to the Chiefs last year. The defense was even worse under D'Amico Ryans against the Chiefs than it was against the very good Kirk Cousins and the Vikings this time around. But the 49ers fixed it the next week against the Rams, and the way they started fixing it was by stopping the run. And that paved the way for Christian McCaffrey to make history by throwing for a touchdown, by catching a touchdown and by running for a touchdown. You need the same kind of domino effect to work in your favor. And the good news for the 49ers is that they have a lot of good players. They'll have good players coming back at some point in Trent Williams and in Debo Samuel. By the way, Jalen Moore was good. I thought that was a big positive for the 49ers. Jalen Moore did a good job filling in for Trent. It was Colton McKibbitz that was more of the problem at right tackle. But when you have a lot of good players and you have a good coaching staff and a documented track record of turning things around, you shouldn't be freaking out. The 49ers Super Bowl teams, there was only one 49ers Super Bowl team that lost only one game, right? 1984, 15-1. and one. The other 49ers Super Bowl teams that won have, have lost at least two games. So you're not going to go through this undefeated. You're probably not going to go through it losing only two. You're probably not going to go through it losing only three. In all likelihood, you're going to lose four or five. Last year, this time, the 49ers were three and four. The year prior, they dropped all the way to three and five. So it's about course correcting based on the data that you have. And we know that the 49ers have a ton of good players. We know that they have a good coaching staff. We're not so sure about Steve Wilkes yet, right? Based on some of the blitzes he called. But Kyle Shanahan said that he wasn't all, he indicated, he didn't say, he indicated that he might not have been thrilled with the all out blitz that they called at the end of the first half, which I thought was a brazen call, maybe bordered on reckless, even though it did set Charverius Ward up. I just don't think he could take that risk at that time of the game. So anyway, Kyle Shanahan has to make sure that he gets his staff into a position where they're calling what he's comfortable with. Kyle Shanahan has to oversee some of these adjustments. And most importantly, the 49ers need to let their talent shine through. It has in previous years. There's even more of it this year. This is gut check time for the 49ers over the next few days. Anyway, again, I can't believe that I'm doing this. A show from a mall. In Minneapolis, trying to get to the airport. I've been here enough. The city where the weather was not good and neither were the 49ers fortunes. But they did have a good molten cheeseburger, the Juicy Lucy. So check it out when you're here in Minneapolis.